Challengers has people and aspects about it that I like. Which is why it sucks that I have absolutely zero interest in seeing it, and judging by some of the early reactions, I'm not alone on that. Like most people, I was introduced to Luca Guadagnino with Call Me By Your Name. My sister and I saw it together at home, and we were both surprised by the fact that we were crying and heartbroken over such a forbidden romance. Something that Timothy himself would get accustomed to with the weirdest episode of Timothy Goes to School. Juaninino's a director who really likes to experiment with just about everything. Cinematography, editing, lighting, color grading, costumes. Especially with having his most recent movies all take place in the past. There's something nostalgic about his imagery. But at the same time, he's a director whose risks I respect a lot more than I actually admire. I couldn't last a half hour for Suspiria, even though the dance ritual at the beginning was pretty cool. The editing was so ADHD that it was driving me crazy. I couldn't hear a fucking word coming out of anyone's mouths. The drier color palette just wasn't working for me altogether. It just really pissed me off. And even though I didn't review it, I enjoyed Bones at all. Taylor Russell's the kind of actress that everybody thinks Zendaya is. Mark Rylance, like everyone said, was the best part, stole every scene he was in. And Chalamet had overall decent chemistry with Russell, but I, for the life of me, couldn't tell you why their characters were in love. The horror was more shocking and gross than it was scary, and the ending just felt forced and completely unearned. Just watching the Challengers trailer with the sound off, Guadagnino definitely made a more stylish and tense looking romantic drama, but there are some other choices he made, like the grainy 16mm look, the muted color palette, and over-the-shoulder shots that just suck out the lust and passion that you need for a romantic movie. All the parts that I guess are supposed to be romantic are the actors staring each other down and making love the entire time. Now Zendaya's been getting a little bit of crap online for her acting and whatever the fuck that was supposed to be. And for a while I didn't understand why people hated her acting until I saw Dune Part 2. And don't get me wrong, Dune is still the best movie I've seen all year. She did exactly what Villeneuve asked of her and she did it well. She's not a bad actress, but... It hit me watching her that she's not a versatile actress either. Whether it be Malcolm and Marie, Spider-Man, Euphoria, you name it, throughout her entire adult career, she is constantly being angsty, depressed, or just resentful to the entire world. It's almost as if Shake It Up was the one time she played a character who actually smiled. Whenever she smiles as an adult, it always looks like she's auditioning for a Blumhouse horror movie. Just like me. And in all fairness, most of her characters have valid reasons to be so cynical and jaded, except MJ, she was just a bitch for no reason. And Zendaya can portray inner t And Zendaya can portray in And Zendaya can portray inner torm And Zendaya and And Zendaya can portray inner tor And Zendaya can portray inner turmoil without And Zendaya can portray inner turmoil without dialogue. And honestly, Zendaya can portray inner turmoil without dialogue better than someone like Aubrey Plaza, but she's still being typecast, and I can't help but wonder that maybe people have a valid reason to do so. Josh O'Connor, I have only seen in Emma, and the most I remember is this. Innocence. 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 No. But I am glad Mike Faced is still getting gigs because he was easily the most underrated part about West Side Story. He's also one of the few actors in it I still have respect for. Ah, love triangles. That bullshit trope where one girl can't decide between two men or vice versa, where one of them does everything a good partner should do without even trying and the other one is just such an idiot, asshole, or complete bore that you have absolutely no idea why this is such a difficult choice. Why are love triangles still a thing? Can't the problems of everyday life be enough to drive two people apart? Look at Malcolm and Marie. The movie was all about how one simple mistake can make you reevaluate an entire relationship. In Spider-Man Homecoming, Peter Parker ignoring his girlfriend and accidentally making her life worse in order to save the world is actually a pretty complex consequence for being heroic. And in Dune 2, as much as Chani tries to give Paul the benefit of a doubt, there are all these outside forces trying to manipulate him into being someone else. And no matter how hard he tries to fight against it, no matter how noble his intentions are, she knows that he can change for the worst. In my opinion, Guadagnino's best movies are all about how life's inconveniences can be challenging. Or the romance. 
So it's not like he needed to rely on this as a plot thread, especially if someone in the love triangle is an ex. And if you're going to do that, you have to be a brilliant writer in order to make us believe that there was a bad reason for them to break up and that their relationship can be rekindled. And I just don't have that much faith in modern day screenwriters to pull something like that off. Maybe I'll change my mind and give it a try in the future, maybe I won't. But the reason I make videos like this is because I think it's important to explain why you don't want to watch movies as much as why you end up seeing them and loving or hating them. That way, hopefully, by some long shot, studios or filmmakers can see videos like this, understand what can and will go wrong, what to improve upon, and more importantly, how to advertise the best aspects of a movie without ruining it. Because if there's any reason a movie bombs, especially if it's good nowadays, it's because you just were not persuasive enough. And with that guys, thanks as always for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Challengers. Be sure to stay tuned for more reviews. Check me out on Patreon and buy me a coffee. And be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.